It's probably painted with tidbits from the Word. Can't get past chapter 8 of the book of Proverbs this morning. This is an everlasting book. The Bible is. It was from before everything was even started. This book was in the mind and the heart of God. Was there anything God did not know or plan? No. Is there anything too far ahead of God or too far behind God or too far on the left or too far on the right that God can't already know exactly what's happened? No. God knows all of it. He knows it all and he set it all up. And in his infinite, the word infinite, in his all-seeing eye, in his all-knowing life, in his all, everything is surrounded around God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The Trinity of God was set up to match the Trinity of man, and man was set up to match the Trinity of God so that we could be used of God to proclaim what he wanted those of us that he's taught to follow him. He wanted to be able to uh, pass on to this human race. He wants to fellowship with men. Verse 27 of chapter 8 said, The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. I sat here before you this morning feeling much better than when I sat down. I developed physical pain when I develop spiritual pain. If I'm out of sorts with the Lord Jesus Christ and the God of heaven because in my mind I get in my own way and say well I can work this out or now that I have this job what job? The job the Lord gave me? And now I'm going to come in and take it over? No way, Jose. If the Lord gave you the job, you better think about it. You better pray about it. You better figure out why God gave it to you. Did he give it to you just so you would have a means of support? And if that be the case, did you see the support? Do you leave your faith hanging on a nail somewhere and go about it in your own ability? Forget it, man. Get right with God. Say, God, I want you to lead me. I want you to guide me. I want you to direct me in every single little bitty facet of this job. Everything I'm going to do on this job has to be just so for you. I am a witness to the people that I'm doing the job for. Do you know what that means? That job has got to be as just as perfect as I can possibly make it in the flesh and in the spirit. It has got to be above and beyond the commitment that I made. The commitment I made is to do a little remodel work. What do I have to do? I need to psych it out, look it over, back up, do not get in a hurry. Take my time. Do it. 
good and then do it excellent. Do it as good as I can do and then take a few minutes and make it excellent. Now, if you want a good life, you got to get in the Bible, learn as much as you can to get as close as you can to God. You got to learn how to live spiritually, which will be the righteousness of God, which will be good in the eyes of God. It might not make people happy, but it'll be good in the eyes of God. And then it'll be righteous in the eyes of God. And then you do it better by continuing in it. Continuing it. What could be better in a Christian life or any better in a Christian life than getting into a church? Getting under the Word. Getting a Bible. Start studying. And then to make it better get in Sunday school. That's the service before the church. That's not just for kids, children. That's for adults. That's for people who want to learn. Go to the church you go to. Find out how many Sunday school classes there is in your age group. If there's only one, go in there. Sit down. Give the man your undivided attention. And if the Lord doesn't give you something in that class, go to the next class up or the next class down. When you get to the class where God gives you something, that's the class you belong in. I don't care if you go all the way down to kindergarten. If that's where you need to be, that's where you need to be. You need to be where God can speak to you and you learn. So you need to find that place in the church house. The way you can start learning, not just on your own, which that's what you do at home. That's what you do in your car at dinner time. That's what you do it on the job when you got a minute or two to look at your Bible. Now, do not take your boss's time you're being paid for. If you do not have permission, do not sit there and study your Bible during the boss's time if you're supposed to be doing something else. Because then you're robbing your boss and you're defeating the purpose because you're committing a sin to do something good. You can't... It never does a bad... Never can you do something bad so that you can do something good. You don't do bad to do good. And it's bad to rob your boss if he's paying you X amount of dollars per hour to do something for him. And you're doing something different. Then you're robbing your boss. I don't care if you're studying the Bible. You're still wrong. Because you're robbing your boss. Even talking spiritually is fine but do not rob your boss's time to do it no more than you rob your boss's time to go in your office turn your TV on and watch a 30 minute program on TV and rob your boss of 30 minutes of devoted time to the business that he has at hand and therefore you're wrong because you're robbing your boss. you got to be right in all points to follow God, to be the Christian life that you need to be. To be the Christian that you need to be, you need to not rob your, the guy that you work for uh, of time or rob him in, in any other way because you can't rob your boss and be right with God. You got to get, you got to get equal. Once you get saved, you got to get equal. You, you might, <laughs> you might need to return ten pounds of stuff you have at home that belong to the boss. When you get saved, you begin to get convicted. You might need to return some stuff you've carried home in time.